All right, Brian, let's talk about the second decision that turned out oh. to be life-changing that was a small this decision. This is going to be a moment in time that I realized. Watch this. We're ready. Rock and roll. So, Brian, let's talk about the second decision that was so that was so amazing. Decision number two, buying the book on Buying the book on podcasting. Do you see this? I mean, what, how cool is it that this prop for the set, I feel like Carrot Top a little bit, I was actually like on the, also. it's one of those Easter eggs that's sitting right behind Bo every day. And if you've ever wondered, what are those books behind Bo? One of them is a book that changed my life. Mm-hmm. If you look at this book, this book came out, I think, in 2004, 2005. Mm-hmm. It's podcasting the do-it-yourself guide. And when I I remember, it, you know, a lot of things happened in 2005 that the stars just aligned. Um, I got to go see Clark Howard live. Mm-hmm. One of my buddies was doing his tax work, and he invited me. knew I was a big fan of Clark Howard. I also got in the, that same period of time, right in the fourth quarter of 2005, I got my first iPod. Mm-hmm. And when I got had that experience with Clark Howard, got my iPod, and I then had this passion, the heart of an educator, to always pay it forward and share the good news of making good financial decisions, I was like, voila, I need to be podcasting. And this book was the ABC, or the one, two, three of connecting the dots to make it all happen. So why was this so significant, Brian? Because, I mean, anybody can go out there sort of podcast, but for you specifically, it was unique because it was the marriage of both your passion, something that you enjoyed, you enjoyed educating, you had the heart of an educator, and your proficiency. You were pretty good at money. It was kind of something you, mm-hmm. you dare I say, you were like a money guy who had information that you could share with the masses, and you figured out how to marry those two things together. Yeah, I think it's interesting looking back is I was not a good salesman. Hmm. I've never, I mean, if people saw the trajectory of my firm growth, I just was not great at selling products or going out there and selling to get a clients. But one of the things I have discovered, I have a big passion for education. Mm-hmm. And what's funny is that once I started sharing my heart and sharing my desire for the abundance cycle and people to learn, apply and grow and be the best version of themselves, now we have a billion dollar firm. Mm-hmm. Now we just have Clients all, all of our, our financial mutants that come to us when they reach that level. I think it's pretty incredible. And I, I'd love for people to think about what, how, what can they do? Because mm-hmm. this is a very unique story about the podcast. But I don't think that, yes, this moment was unique, but I think everyone out there, every one of you financial mutants watching this content, there is something waiting for you to discover that you have a talent that has been provided or blessed upon you that you do better than anyone mm-hmm. else. And you can marry that with some type of economic thing. And there's probably something you can start building your great, big, beautiful tomorrow with. Yeah. If you recognize, you take an inventory of, okay, what are all the things that I like that I'm passionate about? And then what does the world need? What void exists in side of that passion? And is there a way for me to make money on that thing? Can I sell something that someone else would find value in and buy it from me? If you can marry those three things, it's amazing what that can create. And one of the interesting things, Brian, and I think this is an early lesson that you learn is Don't worry about what the cool kids think, because what's going to happen is your passion may not be a passion that everyone else holds, and the thing that you really want to do may seem crazy at the time. I mean, I got to believe when you bought the podcasting book and you said, hey, honey, I'm going to start podcasting, she said, "Uh uh-huh. You're gonna do. You're gonna do what now? Yeah, one of the things that that really warms warms my heart thinking about just when I get sentimental about my relationship with my wife is that I found out later that she did go to some of my friends and say, hey, don't don't pick on him about this hobby. I know it's nerdy. I know it's a little out there. Because realize in 2006, no one knew what podcasting right. was. It's now kind of a household thing. But back then, this was a kind of a quirky little hobby that I had um, developed. And my, I thought it was very just sweet that my wife would go out there and kind of tell my friends. Because mm-hmm. guys, we're pretty rough on sure. each other. We pick on each other pretty hard. But I think that there is a lesson. You think about all the teenage movies or, or movies about just coming of age where I don't care if it's Can't Buy Me Love or She's All That. I think the secret that you find out in all these movies is that the popular kids, they're just as insecure as us mm. quirky, nerdy kids. So don't worry about what the cool kids think. Really try to figure out what your passion is. And if you really do think it's something that you can add value to the world, even if it's kind of going in a different direction, 
lean into that. Mm-hmm. It's okay to be quirky because we all know nerds end up conquering the world anyway. I love it.